empty. Welcome to another Confusion Quickie. One of my patrons asked me if I could reproduce a After Effects tutorial he saw. And uh, although I'm not a motion graphics guy, I thought, why not taking the challenge? I love challenges. And to my surprise, it's like 100% the same procedure in Fusion. There's only one thing you need to be careful. So if you are from After Effects and you're trying to switch to Fusion, today might be a lucky day. Why don't you come closer and let me show you why. Okay, the first thing I did is I set my preferences. I set my resolution to 1024 by 1024 and 16-bit float. Also, I activated high quality and deactivated the auto proxy and I set my range to 100. Okay, so let's drop in a background tool and I'm gonna copy this twice, I'm gonna need this. And next is a rectangle. And with this rectangle, make this white. With this rectangle, I'm basically just going to make my line. It's just easier to do than using a poly line. Something like this. Okay. Now the way we make this line wavy is by using a displace. And this background here. Hook this in. At the moment, nothing happens. So this background tool is going to be our displace map. And... We need a wave, that's why we make something like this. Basically, this is just one wave now. And to do the tiling, we could use this and set it to repeat and then animate the offset. But for this example, this is actually not so good. We better use a different method. I'm gonna show you in a bit. Okay, so let's see what our line does here. Now I have this hooked into this place. And at the moment, nothing happens because the displace type is set to radial. Now, radial, what that does is basically it displaces from the center outwards in a radial fashion. And we don't want that. What we want, we want a vertical displace. And for that, we can use the XY mode. And here we can utilize the Y refraction. And by doing so, we can create some jump rope action. Hey! Okay. But now we might ask, why is this not smooth? I mean, this gradient looks smooth. Actually not. If I show you the waveform, you can see it's actually not smooth. It's actually not round. It's perfectly linear. So this is just an illusion. Now to make this smooth, we can utilize a function called spread in the displace tool. What the spread does, if we crank this up very high, yeah, I can see we get some wave action going on here. Now let's make more waves. For that, I use a transform tool, bring this over here, and now we can scale this down, and I activate the wrap, and bang, see, now we can create some waves. Now, important here for this to work is that you use a value of zero point and a full number, like one or two, for example, I use, let me use two now. And now you're wondering, hey, we have so many ripples here, why is this here so boring? <laughs> now that's because I cranked up the spread pretty high. So if I bring this down, you can see we get our waves. And it looks pretty sweet. Okay, next what we want to do is we want to add a coordinate space tool. And that's basically the same that you would do in After Effects. Uh, set this to polar rectangle. Okay, but if we look closer now, we can see we have some problem here. It actually doesn't close nicely and it's actually getting worse if we would animate this, which we're gonna do now. Um, you can see that it, it doesn't close, okay? So let's set the animation for now here in this transform. And we do that by using a very simple expression in the center. So right click expression and where it says 0 0.5, the first 0 0.5 stands for the X. Uh, here we just type uh, time divided by 200. 
And let me just play that through. Now this keeps playing forever. Yeah, maybe a little faster. So the less this number, the faster it will move. Let's make this even. What about 80? Okay, that's fine. Okay, but now we have this problem here. Why does it not close? I can show you that if I use a transform after the displays, and I'm gonna scale this down and activate the wrap, you can see that here it's strange. It's something strange going on. It doesn't repeat nicely. However, if I put the spread to zero, you can see it looks perfect. So this lets us know that something is happening with the clipping, how it clips here at the borders, but there are no settings. So for now, let me just bring this all the way back to zero. There's another way how we can make this smooth by using a blur node right after the transform. Don't put it in front of the transform. It needs to be after it. Okay. And now I blur this to about 20. Uh, let's make 30. Okay. Now that looks better. But what happens to the borders? You can see still problem here. Okay, but now it comes. If we take a look at the blur again, you can see that we have clipping mode in here. Now this clipping mode is available in many tools in Fusion. For example, the mask tool, if you go to image, you can see we also have a clipping mode choice here. Now the default of the mask is set to none, but the default of the blur is set to frame. And that is the problem. So I assume that the spread here is also using frame because look what happens if I switch to domain. Bang, no problems whatsoever. And now our coordinate space looks pretty nice and clean. So let's increase the waves a little bit. Uh, let's set this to one. Okay, this looks very nice now, but let's bring this further. So how can we make this here become weaker and weaker and uh, basically make it fade to zero effect? Now for that, this background tool is waiting here. And we also need another rectangle. We can hook it in here. And so now the displacement map looks like this. And with displacing, it doesn't matter if it's 3D, 3D displays or 2D displays a value of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, the perfect middle gray will have no effect. It's a neutral gray. So if we merge this now, okay, so now I have this rectangle here. Let's make it like this. And it merges on top of it like this. Let's bring it into this viewer and this displays here. Okay, and now you can see what's going on here. Yay. Of course, now we have to smooth the rectangle, something like this, and watch what happens if I move the rectangle to the left and to the right. It looks like someone's heart is beating. Very dangerous here. Okay, we want to actually see this with the coordinate space. So usually in the center, it should be about right. It depends where you want to have it. Uh, I want to have it on the right side. So about this, and if we play this through, bang, looks very nice. Okay, but we want to bring this further. So let's bring in a duplicate. And now you can decide what you do. You can offset the time, something like this, and you're already good to go. Now, how simple was that? So if I set this to three, it should be fine. Quite fast, so maybe let's make this smaller. So I divide this by 150. Okay, uh, you can additionally scale this, uh, move this a little bit like that. Ah, okay, now it loops nicely. Okay, but let's have some fun here. I mean, it's cool, but it's still quite boring. I mean, with this, <laughs> what can you do with this? Um, so what I thought is that here where the strings kind of split, we could add some particles there. Okay, so let's bring in a P emitter and drop in a P render as well. And here we choose for the region, we choose a line. And I'm gonna put this line about here. Let's set the renderer to 2D. 
I also want to have maybe now let's leave this to one for now. Okay, and let me see what we have. Nothing fancy, so I put in a P turbulence to make them fly around. And let's choose a different style. Let's choose Angon and make them circle. And now, of course, they're way too small. Let's look at the vi variance. And maybe too many of them. So maybe two, uh, something like two. Okay. Now I want these particles to move with the rotation. Or it seems like it's rotating. It's just an illusion, of course. But I want to have the impression that the particles are spinning with the with the circle. For that, I use a P vortex, and just by dropping this in, it should be already perfect. Now I also want to have a little bit more impact when they shoot out. Sort of like they they shoot out whenever these things touch. So I need some sort of sign animation. For that, simply in the number, type an expression. Very simple again. I cannot do complicated expressions, so you're lucky if you're not into expressions. Very, very simple stuff. So I have a sign, time, divide by, oh, I don't remember. And let's see what we got. Spelling mistake, of course. Okay. Now it's must, must should be much faster. So maybe a two. Now you can see it. It's like a fish is swimming here in the dark. Yeah. And I want to add a P friction as well. Ah, not too bad. Maybe increase the strength here a little bit. And if you want to increase the particles you could add i think maybe a multiply two then you will multiply the whole value here and you will get more particles another thing i want to do is in the style i want them to become big for a short moment and then be turn small again and basically turn so small and fade away Okay, let's see how this looks on our, I could increase the, oh yeah, I could increase the velocity variance here, which makes the particle fly further away. Let's bring it a little higher, you see. Now they shoot out and due to the friction, they, they slow down. Yeah, it's not too shabby. And actually let's make them fade out a little bit more. Perhaps the lifespan, well, it's okay. Okay, now I want to have the same thing at the bottom. For that, I just simply copy this emitter down here and I use a P merge to bring them brothers back together. Now, the other, the only thing I have to do is I have to move the spline, the emitter spline, down here. Very simple. Nothing fancy, but big effect. Let's see if we can increase the vortex here. <laughs> pretty strong yeah now it increased the radius so but it didn't look so bad if we don't want to have them going into the center here uh, we could play with the power a little bit and also we can make the lifespan a little shorter maybe 80 I like how they shoot out here it really looks like this these two strings are scratching. <laughs> blip, 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 blip. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's not too shabby. Okay, so basically that's how you can create this uh, kind of motion graphic elements. I hope you enjoyed this and yeah, my name is Vito. I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. Bye.